Good morning and welcome to Peace Out, where we are all learning together to peace out. And we're all learning it's a big process, right? It's not a button we push. I needed a button earlier, though. But we got it. It's all right. <laughs> and I think we're getting better at it. I hope we're getting better at it. Maybe a little bit faster at it. Before I get into de- this morning's devotions, I want to tell you about the book of the, the week, which is The Year Orange Juice Saved My Life. It is available on Kindle. Look, it's on Kindle. Oh, it turned it sideways. It's, it's on Kindle for two ninety nine, or you can get it on my on my website at Dovestar Ministries Bookstore dot com. Uh, it's either place. It's the story of the year I was really, 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 really sick, and uh, it was it was a it's a kind of crazy story. Some crazy things happened during that year or so. I don't know how long it was because my I was kind of out of it, but. Uh, there's no other explanation than that God just raised me up and healed me from that. So it's, it's kind of my testimony and, and uh, of healing and God's faithfulness and how you use scriptures to make, to uh, use a scripture really, <laughs> to make it through there, right? And uh, so just, just grab that testimony. That's the book of the week. Last week was 31 days in Psalm 31. And so I hope you, you guys are enjoying that one. So this morning there's a really a lot on my mind, and I know that's not surprising, right? But uh, I've never seen anything, the smallest thing in our society and in our culture now, the smallest thing can spark such hatred and venom. How do we live as a Christian in this kind of environment, right? Well, first, we don't participate in that kind of stuff. But here's where I'm coming from. There was a Super Bowl commercial that was reminding us to love. And I have never seen Christians go so crazy mad in a bad way over the commercial. It was just reminding us to love one another. Jesus gets us, it says. And I'm not really condoning it. I had some personal things I didn't like about the commercial. And I, you know, I had some things I've kept to myself. That's maybe that's the key to today is just keep it to yourself, right? But I've never seen people just begin to spew venom and hatred at something trying to promote love, right? And so I it made me think about Paul and when he was talking to Timothy and and he told Timothy he said in the last days it's going to be horrible it's going to be very difficult because people are going to hate parents they're going to scoff God they're going to make fun of what's righteous and love what is unholy and and perverse and they're, they're going to hate what is good and righteous but he goes on down here and he says but you and that's why I titled today's devotion but you when we see the world going just crazy over something silly even most of the time it's something really silly or they go totally or they or they let bizarre things go I don't know there's not any there's nothing that makes any rhyme or reason for our culture today right but you Paul said you see all this you see that they're going to hate the truth that they're they, they don't even want the truth man do we see that today no they don't even want us to someone to say no this is really what happened oh no no I literally had a conversation like that the other day. I was like, but I was there and this happened. And they went, well, the, the newspaper said this. And I was like, well, but I was there and this happened. And they said, well, but that magazine said this. I said, but I was there and it didn't happen. And they literally didn't want the truth because they wanted to run after that 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 energy of hatred and venom and, and deceit. I don't get that, okay? But... What all I can do, and that gets frustrating, and that can steal our peace because we're going, no, we want everybody to be right. We want people to love God. We want people to understand this peace we have. We want people to know the love of God. We want people to know that God loves them right where they are, and then we want to let God deal with them, right? It's not our job to condemn. I agree, right? But we've got to love them. But how do we do that? Because it can, for me, maybe it's not for you, but for me, it's very frustrating Our culture can be very frustrating. The way things are kind of unrolling can be kind of frustrating. But in verse 10 of 2 Timothy 3, Paul's laying all of this out. He goes, they're going to be deceitful. They're going to hate the truth. They're going to to be proud. They're going to scoff at God. They're going to be disobedient to parents, ungrateful. All these things, do we see that? We see that, right? And he says in verse 10, but you, Timothy... Know what I've taught you. In other words, go back to what God says. But you, but you stay in the word. But you just love people. But you just love God. But you do what's right. 
See, we're not responsible. And this is where I kind of come to that peace in my heart. And sometimes it's hard to get there because I get frustrated, <laughs> right? I know nobody else does. But that's where we can come to that peace in our heart when we go, but I can love God. I can't love God for anyone else. I'm not responsible for forgiving anyone's sins. I, I'm responsible if, to forgive others, of course. Forgiveness is one of those basic things, right? But I can come back to just, to just, how do my walk with God? I can't walk with God for you. I I can't. I can't. Do, I can't do something for someone else. I can't say the sinner's prayer for someone else and they get saved. But me, I can do it for me. I can follow God with my whole heart. I can pursue Him. I can study the Word. I can't study it for someone else. I can't hide His Word in your heart. It doesn't even make sense when we say it out loud, right? But I can hide His Word in my heart so that I don't sin against Him. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to do what it says. What did Jesus say about the law? He said the whole law, all of the law and the prophets are summed up in this one thing. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then He tacked on and love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the love sums up the law because God is love. And and Jesus came because God loved the world, because God loved us. And then what are we supposed to do? Well, but you just love God. But you just love people. But you just pursue what's right. Because in this crazy crazy world we live in. See, it's not much different than back then. If you read the stories in the Old Testament, they fought and spit and sputtered and hollered at each other too, right? It's not that much different. It, 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 there's always been wickedness on the earth since Adam and Eve fell. But we don't focus on that. Well, but you, meaning me, just focus on God. Focus on God's love. Focus on what he's forgiven you of. That'll change your whole perspective, right? And and And... And then focus on, on your relationship with him. Not, and so keep it vertical. Keep the, focus on that vertical relationship, the relationship you have with God. And then that's what's going to affect you horizontally in your relationship with people. You'll be able, when we love God with all of our whole heart, we'll be able to love people. When we love God with our whole heart, we will be able to, to wash others' feet, as the commercial showed us. But God forbid we do something that shows love, right, without other Christians jumping in there. You're, is, are people going to like what you do? Not always. Not when you're loving God. Not when you're pursuing Him. Not when you're living the Word. But, but Peter uh, taught Paul reminded Timothy three times in Second Timothy, but you, you keep a clear mind in every situation. But you remain faithful. That's, what, that's our part. That's where we find that peace. When we look at the crazy, crazy world out there from all around the globe, it's just, it's just craziness right now, right? But we remain faithful. I can't remain faithful for anyone else, but I can make sure I'm still faithful to God. I can make sure that I pursue Him with every ounce of strength I have. I, make, I can make sure that I hide His Word in my heart. I can make sure I'm only responsible for one person. And whatever he tells that one person is what I'm responsible to do. And he told us to love. Why? Because he loved us. He doesn't have a measuring stick running around going, nope, I can't love you today. You you didn't measure up enough. He doesn't have a to-do list or checklist and go, oh, you only got three out of five. Well, come back tomorrow. Maybe I'll love you tomorrow. No, God just loves us. And we can't sometimes get that because we want to attach it to all this criteria or we want to attach it to all this work that we need to do. God just loves us. And all we're called to do is fellowship with Him. All we're called to do is love Him back. And that's what makes a difference in our hearts, in our minds, in our world. And that's where we can get to that place where we have peace with God and then we can peace out, right? And that's what we're going to do today. So you focus on you. I'll focus on me. We'll be faithful together. And together we can spread love in this world because God is love. That's why we can peace out. Peace out. Have a great day. I'll see you guys again tomorrow.